We're at our broadcasting studio where we make our great videos and transmit them all over the world just for you to watch. And it looks like Toyota sent us a present this week. A 2022 Forerunner SUV. One of my favorites. So let's drive it into town and take a closer look. Goody goody, a 2022 Toyota 4Runner, one of my favorites. This is the TRD Sport, which is kind of a contradiction in terms. TRD is supposed to stand for Toyota Racing Development. But looking at the spec sheet, there's nothing racing about this TRD, mainly cosmetics. With the TRD, you get a fake hood scoop and a painted front end. TRD Sport floor mats, whoopee! TRD headrests. And on the shift knob, a TRD emblem. None of this stuff makes the vehicle go any quicker, by the way. I suspect you already know that. And this brings us to the sport half of the vehicle. Which means instead of off-road tires, we're getting 20-inch street tires. Which means if I take this off-road, which I am, I might get a flat. And Toyota will be getting mad at me. And I see we get the part-time four-wheel drive system, but I don't see a locking differential anywhere. So again, we're limited off-road, but not by much. This vehicle starts at 40 grand, but with some luxury options, upgraded audio and stuff, up to 45.904, which I used to think was expensive until I drove that Ford Bronco last week. It was about to reach 60 grand. And a Jeep Wrangler, about the same. Compared to Lee, this seems like a pretty good bargain. And here's a Ford Bronco we tested two weeks ago. We'll have a link for that video at the end of this video. Just go to the end, click and watch. Gives you two videos to watch instead of one, and for free. Can't beat that. Well, the first things we do when we get a vehicle is to check and see if there's a spare tire. You would certainly expect one on this, and it's underneath. Get a flat. You have to crawl under there and get dirty. Boo hoo. And the second thing we do is take the headlights out in the dark and see how they perform. We're going to do that tonight and we'll post the results at the end of this video. There's only one motor offered in the 4Runner a 4.0 liter V6, putting out 270 horsepower and 278 pounds feet of torque at 4,400 RPM. A lot of critics say this engine is obsolete. Yeah, it's been around a long, long time. Definitely not the most powerful unit around, but it's almost indestructible. I mean, you see these all the time for sale with 300,000 miles on them, all original. Definitely bulletproof. A uh, very thirsty engine, but it's reliable, so I'm not complaining. And in the modern age, where transmissions have 7, 8, 9, and 10 gears, this is an antique as well. 5-speed automatic. Gee, that's like 20 years ago or something like that. But again, super reliable, indestructible. I don't think I've ever seen one of these fail. Not they're maintained properly. Off-road, 5 gears is just fine. Look, the bottom line compared to the Jeep Wrangler and Ford Bronco... This is an antique relic, but they still sell about 145,000 last year compared to the Wrangler around 205,000. Pretty good numbers for an old vehicle. And the Bronco came in third around 114,000. There are three advantages a foreigner has over the competition. Superb reliability, excellent durability, and great build quality because it's been made in the same Japanese plant forever. This thing is put together like a tank. Going to run for a long, long time and not strand you. As much as I like the Jeep Wranglers and Ford Broncos, if I'm going to a remote area, especially by myself, I want a 4Runner. Less chance of breaking down. And I don't like walking. And one feature you might like on the 4Runner, the rear window slides down for open air driving. Something you don't get on a lot of other vehicles. In fact, I don't think anyone else has this anymore. There's nothing fancy about the cabin, but I don't care. It's definitely simple. And the controls are simple. Look at this climate control. There's three basic knobs. Fan speed, temperature, 
Invent control. Even a monkey could do this. I bet even Joe Biden could do this. Oh, political joke. Not supposed to do that. Delete that. The glove box interior is huge. You can fit a lot of stuff in there, especially more if you take out that super thick phone book sized owner's manual that takes up half the space. Stick it somewhere else. A well designed simple gauge cluster with all the information you need. I've driven lots and lots of Forerunners. The only real gripe I have with them are the ones that come with this ugly fake hood scoop. I mean, come on. All it does is make wind noise on the freeway. It's an embarrassment. Toyota, get rid of this, please. First half of the video is over. Second half, we're going to, to do some driving. That's what we're here for. Get some fuel economy readings. As dismal as they might be. With this power steering system, there's no doubt you're driving a truck. It's a bit on the numb side. But definitely better than the Jeep Wrangler, which has no feel at all, and dead on center. But not as good as the Ford Bronco, which is very precise. But I can live with this. I think you can too. These street tires are supposed to provide a smoother ride than normal. So we're going to take some speed humps, find out. Instead of 15 miles per hour, we're going to bump it up to 20. Here comes bump number one. Well, the vehicle bounced around a bit, but I didn't feel anything. Here comes number two. Smooth enough. Number three. And then big nasty one. The vehicle does react to the speed bumps, but the suspension does a great job of serving the impact, so it's still pretty comfortable to drive. As far as 0 to 60 acceleration times go, this is probably the slowest vehicle in its class, but still in daily driving. Oops. Heard that clunking in the back, just a tool chest. When you put your throttle down to the floor, it still moves out fairly decent. Just a note, in 30 miles of hard city driving, 14.5 mpg, yes I was driving briskly, We'll do much better later on on the freeway. I've driven a lot of these. 16 to 19 MPG. That's listed on the sticker. It's pretty accurate. We get over 20. <laughs> Maybe. I can live with this slow mileage, but for you poor souls who live in California paying 5 to 7 bucks a gallon, my sympathies. The Forerunner really isn't designed for highway cruising. As long as you can keep out of crosswinds, it's not too bad. And it's slightly quieter, as far as wind noise goes, than the Jeep Wrangler. I sometimes wonder how quieter this vehicle would be if we didn't have that silly hood scoop out there pushing all that air. Maybe not too much. But I do wish the hood scoop would go away. Serves no purpose whatsoever, frankly. We're coming to end of the line. Let's pull over and see what the fuel economy ended up being. I suspect it's going to be 19 mpg. It always is. This is what the EPA sticker claims. 19.2, pretty much right on the nose. Averaging 75 miles per hour. I noticed some other YouTubers testing Forerunners and they never take them off pavement, which is kind of silly. Why bother to drive it and test it at all? We're going to take this out in the dirt just for a little while. That's why I got my TRD Pro hat. Even though this isn't a TRD Pro, but I'll look cool. Even though the Forerunner has less horsepower and fewer gears in the transmission compared to the competition, when you're in the sticks, how much horsepower and gears do you really need? This thing does pretty good off-road, and I really don't feel I need more gears or more horsepower when the going gets rough. And if you're listening to a bunch of rattling going on, that's uh, some of the gear I'm carrying. A lot of tables and chairs. 
No, the vehicle's not falling apart. Another example of government stupidity. Something like 900 square miles of nothing out here except a couple of cows and a rabbit. 70 miles to the nearest town. And some bureaucrat from some agency decided to put a stop sign out here. You've got to be kidding me. Your tax dollars at work. Maybe there's a cop out there in that hill about 20 miles away. Unbelievable. You might have seen this chair in my other videos. I put this here about, is it two years ago now? And <laughs> it's still sitting here. See the rats are nibbling on it. Well, somebody will still be sitting on it. Even though the Forerunner is an antique relic from the last century, 1990s, somewhere around there, one thing I like about it, it doesn't beat you to death when you're on rough roads like this with all the washboard ripples. Still pretty comfortable. And I found even more so when you get the TRD heavy duty suspension with real tires rather than the basic vehicle with the street tires like this. And one advantage of a Forerunner is its narrow width, which allows it to squeeze on narrow trails that bigger rigs don't like going into. If I remember my specs correctly, this has 9.6 inches of ground clearance. Don't know if these street tires affect that. It seems to be pretty good here. I haven't bought them out yet. Well, I brought this out to do some ranch patrolling, and I see someone left the gate open and let all the cows out, except for a couple. Get time, I guess I'll have to go round them all up. That's the dumb looking one. Always confused. Hey, what are you guys doing out here? Get back in the pen where you belong. Get up. Rawhide. Well, I forgot you're the one with the horns. Uh, nice doggy. Better go back to the vehicle. They look sharp. Well, ranch patrol duties are over, so time to take this rig and head back to town. And this is the end of our test, so the question is, would I take a new Ford Bronco, a Jeep Wrangler, or the Toyota 4Runner? Well, even though the Bronco and Wrangler are modern 21st century vehicles, and this is an antique 20th century vehicle, the build quality, reliability, and durability of the Forerunner just can't be surpassed by the competition. And if it's my money, I might just get the Forerunner or the other two. However, I would make one change. I would not get a Forerunner with street tires. It doesn't make any sense. If you're going to drive a SUV on the street, then what do you need a Forerunner with a part-time four-wheel drive system for? Maybe a two-wheel drive Forerunner, but then why not get a Toyota Highlander? Bigger vehicle, same price. Even if you get an all-wheel drive Highlander. Now before we totally wrap up the video, here's our headlight test. Let's see how these LEDs do in the dark. All right, it's dark enough. And here we have the low beams. That would be the bulb on our right. Now the high beam setting. And the taillights, not very bright. The emergency flashers, definitely more so. At least from the rear. And the emergency lights light up on the side view mirrors, so that's a nice feature. But they're a bit drowned out on the front with the headlights on. If you're going to use the emergency lights, you might as well turn the headlights off so they don't get drowned out. And here's what the camera system looks like in the dark. Looks better in person than it does on my camera. Although the resolution isn't the highest I've ever seen, but adequate enough. I just got this out of the car wash, so 
This is about as clear as it's going to get. And as far as the rest of the cabin goes, there's not much in here. Very simple, so not too much lights up. Surprisingly, some people have been complaining about the digital clock. I don't know why. Now for the headlights. Here we have the low beam on a wall 100 feet away or 33 yards. Good height, good spread. No complaints here. Go to high beam. Not the brightest I've seen, but very strong in the middle. And here we have that bright high beam on a fence line 80 yards away, building behind it 130 yards away. Adequate enough. Go to low beam. Reaches out. Well, these aren't the best headlights I've ever used. They're more than adequate. I really don't have any complaints. I can certainly live with them. Just like I could live with this Forerunner. Nice, solid vehicle.